Should we open the door and wake the neighbors? Do these people make noise over here? But not anymore. Are they are there people in there? Cuz they don't they don't complain. In the old days when we first opened the temple, this is 19 Temple opened John Mastami, I mean um, Govardhan Puja 1978. So, I figure this is 79. Um, the neighbors used to complain about the, you know, the sound, Mangalarti, early in the morning, because it actually bounces off these buildings. And they sent a group, of, we, had to have, we have to have padding on the doors, we had to shut all the d doors, and padding, uh, we had padded, we put against these doors, big frames. And uh, they s had some police who sat across the street with a, some kind of decibel gun that would measure, you know? And the thing is, the devotees started taking the cops, the guys across the street, a uh, nice burfi and sandesh after Mangalarti. And uh, we were under the decibel range, they, you know, the, but they kept showing up. And they'd just park over there without their gun. And they said, hey, we just like the sweets. We said, hey, you don't have to park over there. Just pull up the alley. And for months and months, these, this squad car would pull up about, uh, you know, five after five and get a little cup of burfi and sandesh for each of them, and off they'd go. So it's funny how Krishna works. And the, there used to be a, a, a scuba dive shop next door. And uh, the devotees caught someone breaking in. So the local newspaper, it's just, I'll just finish on this because it's, it's interesting how things have changed. They've become used to us. Um, so the local newspaper, Beach and Bay Press, wanted to find some kind of gossip or criticism. So they, they interviewed this guy. What's it like living next to the Hare Krishnas? The owner of this, whatever it was called. He said, you know, he said, I don't know much about their philosophy, but they're the best burglar alarm I ever had. So then they interviewed, there used to be a private home here. It's a Mrs. Mosley, old, old lady. And Mrs. Mosley's sister lived with her, who was deaf, but liked this. So when they, they rang the door at Mrs. Mosley's house, and, you know, they wrote, she has a card, I'm deaf, they wrote out, you know, whatever. And they asked her, uh, what do you think about the noise? She said, well, I don't hear a thing. So it didn't bother her. And then they asked Mrs. Mosley. Mrs. Mosley said, I like it. I live here alone. And uh, I always know that someone's awake next door. You know, we'd mow her lawn. We'd like, so she was fine. So finally they went over here to this apartment in back. Uh, before this one was built, there was another thing. And they asked them, and they set it up. You know, don't you, you know, they make that noise at, at you know, 4.30 in the morning and it doesn't bother you. It was all in the newspaper. We didn't know it was coming. All these different interviews. And the, w the last guy of the interview was this guy. <coughs> and he said, you know, he said, I work as a longshoreman. He said, I have to be at work at 5, 5.15. He said, I've been fired twice. He said, the Hari's moved in. Bam, I'm up every morning. So that was it. So the neighbors have become. And the lady over here, when we were thinking about moving the whole temple out to Escondido, she, uh, we had to have an, in we asked her to give an interview for the city council. What's it like living next to the Hare Krishnas? And she said many, many nice things. But she said, do you think you're actually going to leave? And we said, well, we'll see. And she started to cry. So a lot of people like the devotees, actually. They get used to us, you know. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Pijanna Balava Divana Dari
Kopijana ba la ba kidivana dari. Jasura nandana bhajajana ranjana. Jasura nandana bhajajana ranjana. Jamuni tirabana chadi. Jamuna tirabana chadi. Jayararo marava gunjabi hadi. Kope jana ba la ba kiribana dadi. Jasura nanda na bridge jana ranjana. Chamo na tira na dadi. Tira na. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Boom, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Rara Marava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Vishnu Bhatt Param Hansa Pri Vichikacharya Siddha Chishma This Divine Grace Abhaya Chodan Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada Ki Iskand DBT Founder Acharya Jagakudu Srila Prabhupada Ki Ananda Kodavaishtra Brinda Ki Namachar Shahidas Taku Ki 
Prem Shigoho, Shigishan Jayatan, Prabhu Nityananda, Shidwaita Gadada, Shiva Sadi, Go Bhakta Brindiki, Sisi Radhakishna, Go Gopina, Shama Kunda Radhakunda, Gidi Govardhan Ki, Brindavan Dam Ki, Maturadam Ki, Dukadam Ki, Navadi Dam Ki, Jagannapuri Dam Ki, Jamuna Maki, Ganga Maki, Tosi Maharani Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki, Samvera Bhakti Vindiki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Sri Siddhartha Giri Dediki, Sri Krishna San Kirtana Jagaki, Gopremanandi. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the divine lotus feet of Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. So today, we're going to, as promised last week, we're going to read about Ramananda Roy, and we're also going to read, because it was his appearance day last Sunday, and then we are also going to read about uh, Brindavan Das Thakur, because it's his appearance or disappearance? I'm not sure which one today. Appearance. Okay. Thank you. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Samanita Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharani Nirvasesha Sunyavari Paskachade Satarani Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sarigu Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If I were to start this class by saying, well, I think, in my opinion, what would you say? Ah, Bhakti Glenn. There's no way he starts shaking. I remember, just for fun, I was at a, uh, it was a, in Boulder, University of Colorado, Boulder. Uh, their slogan is, Minds to Match Our Mountains. And I was thinking, they're both thick as stone. Um, so their state, the, the, I was, the class is there, and just for fun, uh, this I wanted to see what the reaction would be because this student was saying, well, in my opinion, my view, my th and I said, you know, I said, in, in genuine spiritual circles, your opinion, my opinion, doesn't mean a thing. And you could hear a pin drop. Students were shocked. You're denying my selfhood, my, my, you know, I have my opinion, you have your opinion, and, and, you know. So, you know, we got into it. It was actually fun. Uh, because after all, a, a, and Prabhupada, s I was in the room, and this man kept saying, well, as far as I know, well, as far as I can see, well, as far as I can tell, well, as far as I know, Prabhupada finally, after the fourth or fifth time, Prabhupada said, that's my point. How far do you know? You don't even know what's happening on the other side of this wall. We don't know what we were doing yesterday or a week ago. Prabhupada said, you don't even know how you're digesting your food, <coughs> in my opinion. <coughs> how far, you know, what is, anyone know Prabhupada's Dr. Frog, Professor Frog? The, you don't know, Professor, this is Prabhupada's, I think it comes from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. But it goes like this, and I'll be quick. Um, a frog goes on a vacation, and he visits the Pacific Ocean. And he comes back to his fellow frogs in the well and says, hey, I just saw the Pacific Ocean. It's vast. It's immense. It's so the lead frog, Professor Frog, Dr. Frog, PhD, piled higher and deeper, or permanent head damage, or prominent humility disorder. So Mr. Frog says, uh, Professor Frog, PhD, 
says, well, it is, is as big as my well. <laughs> the tourist frog says, no, no, no you, you don't get the picture. You, you know, it, it's immense, it's unlimited, it's vast, you, you know. Oh, four times bigger than my well? And it goes on like this. Finally, the guy puffs up his chest as it is big, and he explodes, Prabhupada tells the story. So the point is that our relative experience it, it's actually very petty and paltry and parsimonious. What is another P word? Pernicious? Putrid? It's not much. But they say it's not, not, nothing to write home about. So the, f the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, in my opinion, I think, you know, what I... It doesn't work. When... What is the turning point of Bhagavad Gita other than Vijay? What is the turning point of Bhagavad Gita? This is a big hint. Second chapter. What changes in the, mo in the relationship between Arjuna and Krishna? He says, no more friendly talks. You instruct me. I'm s you, you, you're the teacher. I'm the student. You instruct me. Then they get. Then it, then we actually start making progress. So the point I'm trying to make is that we come in a noble and profound line. We should always remember that when we go out, Prabhupada said the temple is a base from which the soldiers go out to fight Maya. So when we go out, we should remember, you know, like, of course it's not the right analogy and it's pol not politically correct and all that stuff. But let's suppose, well, I try, I know I can't think of it. I won't offend somebody. So let's just go with the initial one. You know, you're surrounded, you got a few soldiers and you're surrounded by the Red Indians and they're, you know, and all of a sudden over the hill, you hear the trumpet of the cavalry is coming. So we should remember that we have, and property. Anyway, I'll say this. We, we stand on the messages. We stand with the messages of the Chaitanya Charitamrita and the Srimad Bhagavatam and Jiva Goswami. Prabhupada said the smartest person to ever walk on the planet. What to speak of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talk, or you could ask him something 30 years, he'd read it 30 years ago, and he would remember verbatim. You know, but to speak of Srila Prabhupada. So, in all of our acharyas, so it's good to hear these pastimes of these greats. These are historical events. I've got some pictures I'm going to pass out. Um, these are real people. These are real historical events, and this is our tradition. This is our culture. This is the, the when we open our mouth, if we're not saying I think or in my opinion or whatever, but if we reap, Prabhupada would accept. <coughs> I'm jumping ahead, but I'll say it anyway. Trivikram Maharaj told me the story that when Prabhupada was giving those lectures in uh, uh, that hall they rented, Conway Hall or whatever it was, they rented that hall in London. And Shamasunda and Prabhupada gave those powerful, powerful lectures. The introduction of the Shisha Upanishad is one of those lectures. So, <coughs> Trivikram Maharaj was getting Prabhupada a massage before Prabhupada went you know, to, to speak. And Trivikrana Marsh, he felt like he's, you know, you see those movies, they're, they're, they're getting the fighter ready for the boxing, you know, for the champion match, and, you know, they're getting him all loosened up, come on, champ, you know. So he was giving Prabhupada his massage, and he felt like, you know, he was getting Prabhupada in the ring. And so he was saying, you know, Prabhupada, you're the best representative of this, and you're the, you know, you, you, you're the empowered servant of Chaitanya. And he was heaping on the praise. Prabhupada slammed his hand on the mat, said, No! He said, I am simply the servant of my Guru Maharaj. So Prabhupada did not, he would not accept a lot of praise. 
Prabhupada didn't want a biography. They were going to make a film about him, a biography. Prabhupada said, no, no, no. You make about Krishna, about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, after Prabhupada left, then we could do it. Leelam Rita and so many other things. But what was the one phrase that Prabhupada would accept? He didn't change. He said, I am delivering the message as it is. He used the example of post, a postman. The postman doesn't say, well, this is bad news. I'm not going <laughs> to, okay, so-and-so died. Well, I'm not going to give you that one. Or, hey, this is, this is a million-dollar check in the mail. I'm keeping it myself. The postman just delivers the message as it is, and that's the qualification of the postman. So Prabhupada said that the potency, well, I guess I'll just say the whole thing. Um, well, I'll save it for later. So histor the, the, we represent a profound tradition. Prabhupada said, he said, <laughs> you know, in, in the beginning days, Prabhupada was you know, trying to teach us the, the Ishopanishad mantras. Uh, for the morning class, Prabhupada would teach Ishopanishad. And, uh, oh, I mean, we could barely keep our dhotis on, and, you know, we just to, you know, stay awake and, and Prabhupada actually said at one point, he asked the devotees some questions from Bhagavad Gita, and nobody knew the answers, except for Jayatirtha. And Prabhupada said, he said, if someone asks you, you're out selling these books. And then Prabhupada said, if someone asks you, what does it mean? And you say, oh, I don't know, I'm just for selling. Prabhupada said, what is that? So we're meant to study these books. Prabhupada said, we should know them like a lawyer. You know, the lawyer can cite this verse, this case, this and that. And, and, and that convinces people. We should, we, should, and we should know them like a parrot. But we, should, we should know them. Because it, they're... What is it, th that verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita? That if you just apply your mind to this, you just apply your intellect, and you will find something profound. The teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, these are historical fi f figures and they're coming in the noble line. So this is a, a map. We're going to read about Ramananda Roy. Now, Ramananda Roy was the governor of Madras under the kingdom of Maj Prachaparuta. And you'll find a map here. This is, this is India. Orissa's up here. Jagannath Puri's up here. Madras is down here. But this is the size of his kingdom. It was a genuine kingdom. It's called the Gajapati kingdom. And, uh, you know, it went on for about a hundred years in his Maharaj Pachapuruta. So here's his kingdom. And overseeing a large section was Ramananda Roy. So here's Ramananda Roy uh, meeting, uh, when he was the governor of Madras, meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is um, Ramananda Roy meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When they first met, uh, Rama, I mean, he was the governor of Madras. It's a huge, you know, very powerful position and he had all his assistants, he had his entourage with him. So he was kind of restraining his ecstatic symptoms and so was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But they la met later on, they're on the banks of the Godavari River. Here's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu meeting with Ramananda Roy. At the end of that conversation, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed himself to be Radha and Krishna combined. He showed Radha and Krishna separate and then he combined that's why he's Taptakanchana Gauranga. Radharani is the color of beautiful molten gold. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Gauranga, Gorsundar. So here is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealing himself as Radha and Krishna and then Radha Krishna combined. And last but not least, you got some exercise today, Alex. And last but not least, um, Ramananda Roy ultimately retired everything, uh, his post and went to live with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. And this is a picture, in the, there's a, uh, you can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's room there. It's called the Gambira, where he would manifest so many ecstatic symptoms. And so, uh, uh, Sarup Damodar Goswami um, and Ramananda Roy, one is Vishaka, the other is Lalita, and they used to, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radhakrishna combined. And they would discuss all intimate, sublime pastimes. So this is a picture of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and uh, very rare to obtain. And um, 
Surabdhamara Goswami and Ramananda Roy in the Gambira in the room of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discussing Krishna Kata. So that's a little historical reference. And now we'll read from the Samadhi's book. Before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met Ramananda Roy, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya told the Lord that no other devotee's knowledge of Radha and Krishna Madhurya Ras compares with Ramananda Roy's. Although Lord Chaitanya was half the age of 40 year old Ramananda Roy when they met, the Lord said, quote, <coughs> My dear Ramananda, both you and I are madmen, and therefore <coughs> we meet intimately <coughs> excuse me, on an equal level. End quote. Outwardly, he acted as the governor of Madras, but he was a poet, Sanskrit scholar, a dra uh, dramatist, well versed in Rasa literature, music, singing and dancing. During their 10-day meeting in Vidyanagar, Lord Goranga and Ramananda Roy discussed all the points of Krishna consciousness. Empowered by the Lord, Ramananda answered the questions posed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It said, I don't know if it says here, but it says that um, another aspect, uh, on one hand he was Lalita, but he was also infused with the potency of Arjuna. And where Bhagavad Gita ends, where does Bhagavad Gita end? Anyone know? 18th chapter, verse 65, what is it? You just surrender. Okay, and then when you surrender, where do you pick up? So Arjuna comes again as Ramananda Roy, and the instructions of Chaitanya, uh, where Gita ends, the conversations with Ramananda Roy, in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and the Chaitanya Charitamrita to pick up, and they culminate as we're going to describe here. It, it's a fantastic, just like in the Gita, there's the progression, karma yoga, jnana yoga, all the, you know, jnana yoga, all the different yoga processes, and it culminates in devotional service. Bhakti yoga is the apex, is Raj yoga. So in a similar fashion, um, the Ramananda Roy offers all different Vedic processes, as you're going to hear in just a minute, but it culminates in pure devotional service, and then all the different rasas, ultimately up into vipa lumber or the ecstasy of separation of Madhurya Ras. So, sometimes you'll hear this, oh, you know, that ISKCON is the blue-collar wing, the worker wing of the Gaudiya Math, and, you know, you're out there, you're building temples and distributing books, but, you know, where are you diving deep into the higher understandings. Anyway, there's so many things we could say. But the fact of the matter is, there was one, and I won't mention the name because I don't want to offend anybody, but there was one of these Gaudiya Math, um, well, you know, Prabhupada's books, they don't, you, you know. Bhakti Charu Marsh told me personally that, um, After Prabhupada left, it was a difficult time. And so he went to this mat just to get a little shelter. And Bhakti Charu Maharaj, you know, knew English excellently and, of course, knew Bengali and Sanskrit. So this Gaudiya Math personality wanted to engage um, Bhakti Charu Maharaj in translating. He was doing a, 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 a from Bengali into English a version of Bhagavad Gita. And Bhakti Charu Marsh told him, oh, but Prabhupada's already done the Bhagavad Gita. Why don't you do something else? And he said, that is ABC. I will give PhD. At which point Bhakti Charu Marsh packed his bags and left, you know. And Bhakti Charu Marsh asked him, he asked, why are you leaving? And he said, have you ever read Prabhupada's books? You say that Prabhupada's books are A, B, C, and you'll give Ph.D. But have you ever read Chaitanya Charitamrita? Have you ever read? Th no. And there was another big Gaudiya Math guy who said the same thing. And he was asked by Tamal Krishnamarsh, have you ever read? No. And if you read the Chaitanya Charitamrita, this conversation with Ramananda Roy, what to speak of the whole Antya Leela of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
It is profound. Madhurya, Radha, Krishna, the Gop. It just, it is so far over our pay grade. But it's all there. So it's just, it's just totally everything. Brahmananda told me one time that he was uh, preaching in Africa, and sometimes he would go to Western Africa. And in places like Senegal, Dhaka, they have ve French ed universities, very, very top universities. And he said it was an amazing thing. He'd gone into the, the university in Senegal, in Dhaka. Is, it, is that the name? That's not Dhaka. What is the name? I forget the name of the capital. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and he said that he, he was going to meet the professors. And he, the professor had been reading a Krishna book. And he was making, co after reading Prabhupada's Krishna book, he was making comments on a different, on a, on a deeper, profounder level Brahmananda had never even thought about. And then when he came, he said, geez, this man had, you know, had deeply gone into Prabhupada's books on a level that even Brahmananda had never even thought of. And then when Brahmananda came out, he said that the, 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 the rickshaw walla, literally it was a rick, you know, this is the 70s, you know, pulling a rickshaw. And he'd had a case of the books in the car, you know, sitting in the rickshaw. He was in there for a couple hours. The rickshaw walla was reading Krishna book and laughing. He was having a great time reading Krishna book. You know, just the story of the, just the, you know, the far out blissful stories. So Brahmananda made the point that uh, who, where is an, you know, an author usually has a niche. You know, they're, 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 they're you know, postmodern, ex, you know, existentialist, or they write mystery, or they write romance, or they, they've got their little niche, and they've got their little audience. But Prabhupada's books, you know, a child can pick them up, uh, Harvard professors pick them up, and they, it, there's so much in them. And I've been reading Bhagavad Gita since, what, 1969, so you can do the math. Every time I open Bhagavad Gita, I find something new. Has Bhagavad Gita changed? What's happened? Hopefully, what's happened? I've grown. I've changed. I've, you know, I've got a different experiences in my life. So you know, that's my simple point. These books and this tradition, we should always be. Sudam said to Srila Prabhupada, if you were ever in an airport when Prabhupada arrived, I mean, I could tell you a number of airport stories, but I want to at least finish Raman and Roy. Uh, the devotees just took over. We, you know, there was all social etiquette was abandoned. You'd have 300 devotees, 12 madungas, who knows how many pairs of kartals, throwing flower petals to Sri Rubini Pashad, I'm sprinkling rose water. It was just, it was amazing. So, after one of these greetings in Los Angeles, Sudam Maharaj said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, when I walk with you, sometimes I feel proud. And then he said, Prabhupada, is that all right? You know, because, you know, more taller than the tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, lower than the straw in the street. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. And Sudam told me that Prabhupada said to him, No, you can think that by the grace of my spiritual master, I am no longer a fool and a rascal. I'm no longer just completely blown this way and that. Prabhupada says kick like a football, and he means soccer. You know, the ball's just being bounced this way and that, you know. So we should feel transcendentally proud. That that is a quiet, it is not arrogance. It is a, not a sense of one, unth, one upsmanship. But that sense of quiet confidence. Prophet said only the devotees know who is who and what is what. We know what's going on. We know what this material nature is. We know who we are. We know where we're going. We know how to help people. We know who is who and what is what. And so we should always have that quiet confidence based on these great personalities and this tradition. Okay, that's my intro, <laughs> believe it or not. So, during their 10-day meeting in Vidyanagar, 
Lord Goranga and Ramananda Roy discussed all points in Krishna consciousness. Empowered by, Lord, by the Lord, Ramananda answered all the questions posed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's the format. It's fantastic. It's questions and answers. And then he gives a great answer. And Lord Chaitanya said, that's very good, but, but can you go a little higher? And then he'll come out with more. And Ramananda Roy says, I'm just the puppet and you're pulling the string. So it's Lord Chaitanya, but it's a very nice format for learning. Ramananda Roy gave a series of answers to Lord Chaitanya's first question, how to attain the ultimate goal of life. Shouldn't that be the first question? What do you think, Bhakti Alex? What is the, you know, what's it all about? What's, what's the, what, is, what is the one? Th Prabhupada said there was a man who was deaf, blind, how does it go? Blind, poverty-stricken, and childless. And he was given one wish, and he can't wish for unlimited wishes. Nice try. Poverty stricken, no children. Of course, now people have abortions that don't care. But in those days, you like to have a children and a family, and you know. So no children, blind and poverty stricken, and he's only got one wish. What did he wish for? Prabhupada's story. He wished to see his children from the roof of his palace. You follow? If he if he sees his children, he can see. If he's seeing children, he's got children. If he's on the roof of his palace, he's a king. So with one wish, he accomplished everything. And Prabhupada said, with this one, what is the goal of life? What, what, what's it, what is it all about? If you water the root of the tree, the whole tree is nourished. So that's, what, that's the existential question, the either-or question. What is it all about? So that's where it begins. How to attain the ultimate goal of life. He began with Varnasham Dharma and progressed to Karma Yoga and all these different, here it goes, all the different, sta ultimately he comes to the point of uh, uh, Jnana Mishra Bhakti, you know, devotional service, but mixed with, with Jnana, mixed, mixed with Karma Kanda, mixed with, and then he comes to pure devotional service, then okay, then he go, goes through all the different Rasas. So I don't want to give the whole thing here, but you got the idea. Okay. Confirming that this was the highest, it finally comes to Prema Vilas Vivarta, pure devotional Radha Krishna Madhuri Ras. Confirming that this was the highest goal of life, Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda how to obtain it. Ramananda Roy said, without adopting the mood of the gopis and following in their footsteps, one cannot enter the confidential pastimes of Radha Krishna. There's no other way to achieve the service of Radha and Krishna within the pleasure groves of Vrindavan. Does this mean we dress up like gopis? What do you think? You have nice eyes, Alex. How would you look in a sari? <laughs> and and, is it, it and, and uh, your Guru Maharaj tells the story about, I forget who it was, was some so-called sannyasi wouldn't come out of his room because, you know, and Prabhupada had told him that everyone should go to the morning program and, you know, so finally, the guy wouldn't come out, and he opened the door. He said, there it is in his coping. He's going, meow, meow. But he was in the mood of a peacock. Chinese. It's craziness. Um, actually, what is the business of the gopis and Krishna? Uh, let me say it this way, and I don't want to go too far afield, but the, the, to bring the, the gopis are always making, making tasteful arrangements for Krishna, to enjoy the Shamati Radharani, and Radharani is making tasteful arrangements for Krishna to enjoy with the gopis, to bring everyone to the service of Krishna. And what are we doing when we go out on Sankirtan? What is our mission? Somehow, uh, yeah, but somehow or other, to reach out to the heart of this jiva soul and bring him back to Krishna. They're wandering in this material world, that famous country western song, looking for love in all the wrong places. This is our mission. This is our mission to go out there and say, no, no, no. You know, that hole in your heart, that the personality. The, I mean, I've mentioned it so many times, but right in back of me, next to, next to Diamond in the Rough Apartments, there's another apartment. And they, they drink 
Friday, Saturday, and by, the, by this time, when, when I go back after Mangalarti, they're fighting. They're always fighting. They've come to the, the women are screaming at the men, the men are screaming, they're slamming doors, you know, they're, that's how it all devolves. So, that's our business. Prophet says, you make Krishna your child, he'll never grow up. You make Krishna your master, he'll never send you away. You make Krishna your lover, he'll never leave you. So that's, what's, that's our business. We go out and we arrange for these conditioned souls to meet Krishna. Okay. You know, there's a whole process of that, you know. No, no, not that. Here's all the reasons why that's not right, and here's what the right thing is. Okay. The gopis don't have any desire for their personal sense enjoyment. Their minds and bodies exist only for Krishna's enjoyment. If one is greedy to taste the nectar of gopi bhav, spontaneous the loving mood of the gopis, he will give up the world and the rituals of Vedic dharma to perform Krishna bhajan. One who worships Sri Krishna on the path of Raghunuga Bhakti spontaneous devotion will obtain Brajanda Nandana in Vrindavan. However, one cannot attain the blissful association of Krishna Chandra in Vrindavan merely by following Vidhi Marg, which means all the rules and regulations. Even Jesus says that in the Bible. You know, what is it? You follow all that, but you don't, you know, the spirit of the law, but not the, you know, the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. What, you know, what will you understand if you don't come, become to genuine love? I'm going to skim through this. Um, after finishing his talks, Ramananda saw something never seen before. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed himself as both Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna. Seeing this, Ramananda fell unconscious in transcendental bliss. In Jagannath Puri, Srila Sarupadamada Goswami, another topmost Rasika Vaishnava, joined Ramananda to intimately serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Together they helped Mahaprabhu taste the loving ecstasy of Madhurya Ras. In the Gambira Leela, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would stay up all night enraptured in Srimati Radharani's mood of separation from Shamasundar. Singing his own songs and the poems of Vidyapati and Chandidas, Ramananda Roy would delight Lord Goranga with his enchanting melodies. He would understand the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and sing a song or something just appropriate to it. Krishnadas Kaviraj says that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt intense pain of separation from Krishna, only Ramananda Roy's talks about Krishna and Subdhamadar's sweet songs kept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu alive. Ramananda Roy was the first person to reveal the deep varieties of ras which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu privately savored within himself. He saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the combined form of Rasaraj Mahabhav. Rasaraj, Sri uh, Krishna, and Mahabhav, Swarupini, Srimati Radharani now appeared in one beautiful, dazzling form. We're almost done. Lord Chaitanya once said, Although I am in the renounced order of life, still my mind is sometimes disturbed even upon seeing the wooden form of a woman. If our minds ever... It's a nice statement by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that even I see the curved form of a tree, I sometimes think of a woman. So the mind is always going to... He's taking our role, of course, it, the mind will be disturbed by so many things, and it just it comes in and goes. Prabhupada says when you look at a, a, a pond of water, some, you know, sometimes some muck will float up from the bottom. It just comes up. And the mind is like that. We've got so many lifetimes of this and that, you know, and you think, where did that come from? So that will happen. We should not be surprised. What is the test? What is the measure of the man? When those things enter, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, fine. And that, that makes me think of when Prabh was approached by a prostitute on a train as a young man. Prabh was very handsome. Prostitute sat, Prabh was all alone in the train compartment. A prostitute sat down next to Prabhupada late at night, all alone, beautiful prostitute. Do you know what Bach to Alex, what did Prabhupada do? Prabhupada closed his, and Prabhupada's very handsome. You look at that, that day's ointment, you see the pictures, this early pictures of Prabhupada. So Prabhupada, um, this prostitute sits down, you know, advertising her wares. Prabhupada closed his eyes, chanted Hare Krishna, 
as loud as he could, repeatedly. And then Prabhu, with a smile, said, when I opened my eyes, she was gone. You can imagine. She said, I'm not getting anywhere with this guy, you know. But so the, the point is that the, the mind will be disturbed. We have to expect that. But the question, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, you pull it back. It's controlled by detachment and, and constant practice. Oh, oh, as, as the a wind blows away a boat or a candle in the wind. That's the nature of the mind. So, But Ramananda Roy is greater than me. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying. For he always remains undisturbed even in the presence of a young woman. What this means is that Maharaj Prachapruder used to arrange dramas of the gopis' pastimes. And he would have to train these young girls how to dance, how to play the parts. And they were performances that did, they still to this day, they do them for in front of Lord Jagannath, these different nice, you know, Madhurya Ras, uh, Vrindavan pastimes. So he had to teach them, but his mind was completely undisturbed. Something we should not imitate. Okay, we're almost done. Upon meeting Bhavananda Roy, the father of Ramananda Roy, Lord Garanga said, Indeed, you are Pandu, and your five sons, Ramananda, Gopinath, Vaninath, uh, Kalanidi, and Sudanidi, are the five Pandavas. Although sometimes called Arjuna, Ramananda Roy eternally serves Radha Gopinath as the Lita Saki. Some Gaudiya say, uh, say he's uh, Vishaka, so Lalita Vishaka. So that's something on Ramananda Roy and these noble personalities. I think we're going to end there because of the time. <laughs> I guess we're perennially behind. And we'll do Brindavan Das Thakur next week. And we've got some good stuff. Any question? Any comment? Anything at all? All right. So when you go out, are we alone? When Prabhupada was alone in New York City, when he was asked, it was a nice reporter, it was a lady reporter. Prabhupada was an elderly gentleman, innocent. Uh, Prabhupada had a, a, not childish, but he had a childlike innocence to him. Mukunda Marsh said Prabhupada was on a radio show, and this lady called in fundamentalist Christian, agitated as hell, trying to find some fault with Prabhupada. And she said, you know, Prabhupada had this, she said, you're just a freeloader. You're just a freeloader. You know, we're not, you know, slaving away at the fender bender factory or whatever. You know what Prabhupada's answer was? Prabhupada said, yes, I am a freeloader. And Prabhupada explained later on, Mukunda Maharaj explained to Prabhupada what that means. That it's not a, a, a you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a criticism. And Prabhupada thought, oh, he got free passage on, on, on the Sindhya shipping line. So Prabhupada was a freeloader. He got here for free, you know. So Prabhupada took it in a very innocent way. So um, this lady, so you've got Prabhupada. When Prabhupada first saw snow falling in New York City, the first time he saw snow, you know what he thought? If you see the old pictures of Calcutta under the British, it was the second city of the British Empire. The jewel in the crown was India, and Calcutta was the capital of India. They used to, those, you see those, it's, it's fun to do. If you ever you do a Google search sometime, and you'll see these old colonial uh, Calcutta. Beautiful old buildings, and they used to whitewash them. So they had the, they're all nice and white with the green gardens in front and everything, and that whitewash would flake off. So when Prabhupada first saw the snow, he thought it was the, the buildings had been whitewashed and it was falling off the building. So Prabhupada had that innocence and picking up on that, in Prabhupada all alone in New York City. So when the reporter said, you know, oh Swami, you must give it a break. We'll be done in a minute. So when, the, when <laughs> that was the, everybody's on burrito consciousness, so I will finish. So especially after Codicy. So when, they, when the reporter said, oh, so, and you know, Prabhupada was an elderly gentleman, two heart attacks, so many things, you know. Prabhupada had, had his, in his suitcase, Prabhupada brought oats because he didn't know if he was going to be able to find anything to eat. 
he thought, well, I can live, I can make some oatmeal, I can live on some oatmeal. With a little, I'll be able, probably able to find some milk, and I can cook some oats and milk, and I, he had enough to live for a couple of weeks. So I figured, okay, well, I can, I'll soldier through. I mean, just imagine, you know. So the lady said, that the reporter said to Robert, oh, you must have been all alone. You were all alone? You weren't afraid? New York City, which just devours people? What was Prophet's answer? Oh, you were all alone. He said, I was never alone. My Guru Maharaj was always with me. So he had Krishna, he had Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had his Guru Maharaj. So we should meditate on these great personalities, and when we're out on Sankirtan, we should pray to them. Please help me. Okay, we can end there. All glories to Prophet. We should end. It's burrito time.